Welcome back. So we're continuing our field trip in Detroit, uh, and I'm here with PJ, who is a business owner in the Corktown area. And uh, PJ, do you live here in Detroit? I live in Detroit, live on the east side. Can you tell us about this business that we're in? Uh, this is PJ's Logger House. It has been open as a, a bar even during Prohibition from about 1915. It's never closed. I've owned it for about 12 years. There's three previous owners. Mm -hmm. Um, we are open seven days a week. We do live music, live original music, and um, uh, food and drink. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're a neighborhood, sort of a neighborhood institution. We've mm -hmm. been here, it, it, it has never closed. There were times when it wasn't open that often, but it's never closed. Mm -hmm. So you're the proprietor of this historic Detroit institution, uh, the owner, and um, we're doing a project on Project Greenlight. I understand. You're familiar with Project Greenlight, so I don't have to introduce it to you. No. Is that right? No. Okay, so um, so uh, I know that the there's a business association here in Corktown, right? And yes. that uh, you guys were made an offer about whether you wanted to be a Greenlight Corridor. Can you tell me yeah. a little about that? Well, I think uh, I, someone from the city, I believe, approached us and said, look, we'd like to make uh, Michigan Avenue a Greenlight Corridor. Um, we need to get four or five businesses within a smaller area to do the first pod. And it has not extended out Michigan Avenue yet, mm -hmm. but we were the first pod, which was us, Detroit Institute of Bagels, Brooklyn Local, uh, McShane's, and I'm not sure who the fifth person is, but there's five different groups. And, and so we agreed to, number one, get the high enough speed internet, which we pretty much all use rocket fiber, and uh, to allow them to put cameras up and to record and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, So can you tell me, what was the deal with rocket fiber? I, I heard this from another business owner as well. Uh, you know, you asked for details, and I'm not quite sure I remember them all. I know that they were involved and they offered us the their um, uh, optic fiber optic uh, mm -hmm. internet service, faster internet service, mm -hmm. and so <clears throat> now today we have our internet services, Rocket Fiber, our TV is Comcast, mm -hmm. and uh, and Greenlight is a separate entity from that. I see. But there is. But uh, it was bundled together, I believe. Yes, that was the deal. Yeah, it was originally bundled together. Now it is kind of separated out. I see. So, but so. Yeah, you know, we have. We're happy with the rocket fiber uh, as having that high speed, inter higher speed internet that mm -hmm. works really well. It doesn't go down that often, and it works very, very well with the green light integrated. Well, as a business owner, can you comment on your experience with Project Greenlight? Yeah, has it been? for the most part, it's been pretty good. I mean, there's initial, you know, getting to know each other stage of, of dating. Uh, they originally wanted to put cameras inside the bar, and I said, no, that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, but in general, they. Uh, have been very good. Um, they're responsive. If people call from here and say mm -hmm. something's happened, I'm at a green light location, they can look at it much more quickly as mm -hmm. ascertained. My brother was here one time, uh, had never driven a push button car before, mm -hmm. and left his key fob in the car and got his car stolen. Oh no. And so it took a couple trips to the police station. This is the first one, first of all, it just came on. A couple of to, to get them to understand, no, this is a green light location, you'll be able to see it. And sure enough, when they finally located and saw the film, the local police officer, Officer Toit, said, I know who those two guys are, we can get a warrant for this. Mm -hmm. And they got a warrant for them. And so people, the thieves know that we have green light, know that we pay attention to it, and know that they're, if they're familiar to the territory and they, they're on film, they're much more likely to at least get arrested. Maybe they don't go to jail, maybe they don't spend any time in jail, but at least they know someone's watching and they may go someplace else. Mm -hmm. it's, it seems to have helped. Uh -huh. That's great. So. Um uh, have you heard about the controversy? I mean, there's been, since last summer, particularly um, complaints about Project Greenlight because I understand initially the city made a statement that they weren't using automatic face recognition, but in the summer it was revealed that they were using automatic face recognition. Is that I, can't, I don't know what they're using facial recognition wise, mm -hmm. but I, I hate, and I'm old, and I don't, I'm not a fan of it, but the privacy that was once considered normal mm -hmm. no longer is. Mm -hmm. um, 
you are, and, and you expose yourself every day. We all got a phone in our pocket, mm -hmm. and that phone is feeding back a lot of data every single day that we're giving up. Now, if we all want to give up our iPhones and want to give up our interconnectivity, mm -hmm. well, maybe we'll go back to more privacy. Now, but I do understand people's problem with it. If it's inaccurate, if it causes false arrest and all that kind of thing. But that never was part of what we were doing here with Greenlight. It was mm -hmm. never mentioned. It was never brought up. Maybe it was be done behind the scenes. I couldn't tell you that. But mm -hmm. as far as talking about what we were doing, no, there was no facial recognition mm -hmm. technology involved in the green light here. Mm -hmm. The main thing it was used to do here was to let people, see, we've had cameras, our own, our own cameras here for years. Right. And uh, the police have come and used our cameras many, many, many a time. But now they've got their green light, and even though they don't have as many as we do, but between the different locations, mm -hmm. now they can actually see a car figure out what kind of car it is because on this at night you can't even sometimes tell what kind of car it is mm -hmm. tell it what kind of car it is and which direction it headed and by knowing all of that stuff they can kind of piece things together and and now with an, enough of these green light cameras they can actually trace a, a track that someone takes off and they may find find mm -hmm. them as a result mm -hmm. so uh it has definitely made a difference and i don't i don't own any of the parking lots around here but at night when we have music, we have a full house, people do come and occupy the lots. And, um, and in all honesty, I think uh, it has, the thieves have gone away more so than the opportunity. The opportunity is still there, but they know that if they take a shot at this, it's very likely they're gonna be recognized. Mm -hmm. And if they have any chance of being recognized by the local police officer, the hassle of getting arrested is the hassle of getting arrested. Uh -huh. so. Well, so, um one thing that I heard from other people when I was looking into Project Greenlight is that some business owners, even though they support the project, were frustrated that they felt it was an additional public safety tax. Like they wanted the, they wanted the city to provide this service as a part of taxation and not as an extra fee for four or five thousand dollars. Well, if we want to get into a discussion of taxation of the city of Detroit, yeah, we get a long discussion about that. Mm -hmm. uh, I really, it's one of these things. I have lived in Indian Village for 24 years. Indian Village is a very, very nice neighborhood, but Indian Village does a lot of that for themselves and always have because they can, because they can create the a scene that will like the Indian Village Home and Garden Tour. That brings money into the neighborhood, that money gets spent in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, you have people who can afford to spend disposable income on something like uh, historically restored street lights like we did last two years ago. Um, we got all our street lights are getting just replaced with new street lights. We have his, we restored the historic ones and we still have those up there. We also have to deal with the uh, you know the pain of uh, not pain the the pain in the neck of uh, being a historic district and having to follow the rules there. Mm -hmm. But I've always been kind of used to it as long as I've been back in Detroit, which is I'm on one of my 25th year, is if you really want something done, go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to tear down, <laughs> tear down that, go ahead and tear it down. You want to build something. But so I really kind of feel like in the green light situation, yeah, everybody didn't sign on. The, those of us here on this little group of blocks did, and I'm glad they did because I've always been mm -hmm. an advocate. But um, it, to me, I got the the when I first bought this place and I got the cars wrapped broken into, I just thought they were crimes of opportunity. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize these guys are professionals. They're out regularly, got their regular patrols, know where they're going to go, know how they're breaking in, know what they're looking for. And um, when I realized that they weren't just crimes of opportunity, well, then, then I go, okay, these guys are just going to prey on all of us until we do something to try to stop it. And mm -hmm. I think that the, um, the green light has made them aware that they can be seen. And that's the biggest single thing that a thief wants, to, mm -hmm. not, to not be seen, you know, mm -hmm. so. Um, so I, I, yeah, yeah, if I'd love to meet, no one ever to know where I was or anything I did, and put my email away and put my computer away mm -hmm. and put all, never touch, never touch a smart TV or anything. But though that's another era, another day, and we're not going back there. We're just not going back there. You know, so. I, thanks so much. I got it. So um, the only other thing I'd ask is: Is there anything that I should ask you, or that you want to share about it that I didn't ask you about? Uh, no, I think I, 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 for for what it is used for here, uh, Greenlight has been a really uh, a big a big plus, mm -hmm. and I appreciate it. Um, I appreciate. Uh, I mean, we have a, a, a patrol officer who really patrols this neighborhood pretty regularly, and I appreciate that too. I think, and now, of course, I'm speaking 
Washington. I guess, but it got, I'm speaking because I live in two of the safest places in Detroit. Corktown is very safe. Indian Village is very safe. The rest, you know, when you get out beyond these areas, you look at this, the statistics and you say, oh my goodness, there's all kinds of things going on here. Mm -hmm. What's going on in these two areas is, is, less, is less. And I think part of it is lighting, it's lighting in general, yeah. vigilance, and then things like, especially using technology to kind of get a step ahead because mm -hmm. the car, car thieves are not, you know, super technologically proficient. They're mm -hmm. just doing a, doing a gig, you know, mm -hmm. where a, a little more technology, you can kind of step out ahead of them maybe and maybe stop them or at least get them to refocus in other areas mm -hmm. because uh, we, I hope someday that the population returns to this area of town. It's still, Corktown is still, you know, it's got all this new development stuff going on, but right now we're still, these are the first new housing that we've had in this neighborhood in 40 years, you mm -hmm. know? And so it's been a very stagnant, you know, about now so if we fill up all those apartments, we fill up all those condominiums, they build some more. Well, all of a sudden we'll have more people here and, um, and more people seem to, to, to push push out. It, it, it's spreading. I mean, it, 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 people move to new neighborhoods, pick up that house that's dilapidated and just a little outside the cool area and they make it a new cool area and I just think mm -hmm. that's going to continue. I'm a big advocate in case anybody's interested on Field Street over on the east side. There's some great <laughs> houses on Field Street. You're going to sell some uh, houses to our students. Yeah, okay, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, Peter. Okay, you're welcome. Very Thank nice you. you. Thanks for coming in. Nice to meet all you guys. Mm -hmm. Thanks for visiting Corktown. Yeah. Come back anytime. <laughs>